Today is uh, third, fourth weekend, but that means probably three quarters uh, into January and it's for change quite a mild day. We had a succession of sort of fairly cold nights uh, to minus six. Today is slightly better weather to do something. So I ventured to the allotment and I know that January is not the most attractive month. However, we normally do our um, garden tour once a month and I really committed myself to that. So Polytunnel is still fairly empty and acts as a storage, but soon we'll be filling up with um, potatoes planted in pots. So that's not far from happening. These three longer um, raised beds um, no dig and these are empty as we had the rodent attack on the, on the spring cabbages and I will be putting broad beans and um, later on any kind of beans in, in, in the last one and the first two are going to go under broad beans. The, the soil is prepared, everything is ready, warming up <laughs> and hoping for, for something to be planted there. Now, this bed needs some attention. This is the only surviving bed of spring cabbage. I don't know how many of them will survive. They have quite a lot of um, slug damage. So, but I'm hoping that at least five of them will make it. And this is my uh, organic slug um, repellent. What is going slightly crazy there. Uh, and in between, as you can see, there is a uh, elephant garlic planted. I've got, I had four cloves, so all four of them are planted. I'm going to weed it today and sort it out. That's why the wool is out. And this one, this is going to go under some onions. There is still a couple of uh, remaining celeriac here. And, uh, a little bit of, I think, spinach from last year. Um, but that is going to be done today. That's an easy thing. It's been amended already, but I might put a little bit more compost in. Um, and it's ready to go. The flower bed, as you can see, things are sprouting. Had a great sort of rate. These are mainly irises on this side. And there might be some... some I can't remember what I planted, but well, it will be a surprise unless I look through my old videos. Well, this is an example of onion which failed. We have one onion and I don't know why it failed. Um, perhaps, I don't know, maybe too dry, too something. It was, something didn't agree with the onion here. I will amend the bed and the plant. I've got plenty of onions still left. So this is a purple sprouting broccoli and they doing okay, I would say. Um, I can see that some of them are um, sort of more advanced than others. I can't see any broccoli heads on any of them yet, um, but they have lots of side shoots. Some of them are not. But that's okay, because we won't have a glut at the same time, which is okay. Now, this one, this bed here, well, it's got some garlic. This is all my soft neck garlic. And it's at the moment, it's getting slightly, some of the leaves are getting yellow. I'm not sure why. And... These are the celeriac I actually, when we covered that, that's completely revived. So occasionally if I need for flav flavoring, I take one or two of those sticks. I haven't been buying celeriac, we don't need massive amount of it. So, and in this bed is the onion which actually, all of them sprouted, germinated. 
and um, they're looking okay. They don't look great, but they've been put quite late. So I just wonder what that is. I have no idea. It might be an uh, elephant garlic because I planted some last year and I might have failed to, I think I've got two of those, this one and this one. I, I, I might have not picked, picked um, the, the, the garlic itself. So, well, that could be a bonus. As you can see, there's some blueberry bushes behind and the soft fruit um, bed which has mixture of uh, gooseberries and red, red, white and black currants. Um, this is altogether nine of them. Um, these are a couple of little beds so uh, luckily I found, night no, actually found some of that hardened garlic um, and I planted it last week. Uh, and I'll show you what happened. Nigel found my uh, lost hardneck garlic. So on the right hand side, we've got the hardneck Lautrec white, and I only planted uh, 13 cloves of that, or 12, and 15 of the Carcassonne white on the left hand side. I shall cover them now. But this will be also a reminder for me what I planted where. So next to it is the bed which had sweet chard in and parsley and well I've cleared it mostly last weekend there's few bits left but now it's been so frosty it all have gone. Um, I've got shallots ready for this but I won't put them in this week, maybe a couple of weeks, when they actually root. I speed them up a little bit in a, in a polytunnel. I mean, these are sh sets of shallots. Now, the, this area, well, we will have lots of self-some self nasturtium, not nasturtium, calendula here, actually. But because it's all kind of died down, and last year I had some which actually overwintered finally, well this year that didn't happen. I can clear it up and um, make sure, because there was quite weedy here, make sure that we don't have the same problem this year. Um, there is quite few raspberries which obviously came across from behind the chicken wire here. So all these are going to be transplanted to the food forest. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, in excess, about 20. And they are mixed. Some of them are uh, winter and some of them are summer. So we'll, I'm not sure how I will plant them. Um, but I will try to guess. Um, I also have a couple of, um, um, not a couple, um, one lot of um, raspberries, yellow raspberries on order. So that should arrive soon. And that, that's going to be the day when we, for a very, very first time, uh, plant um, some um, uh, something in the food forest. We, we tidied up the soft fruit around the uh, horse box and oh look Ace is just here hello Ace would you like some polos oh yeah been cold recently for you haven't it yes I know you have a warm coat but it's been cold for an old horse just bear with me let me get you some more
so moving away from Ace, well that area has been, some of it was, is really well prepared with manure by Nigel. We will be uncovering this plastic here uh, quite soon, I would say probably end of February, beginning of March, because this is going to be our new potatoes area. I always use potatoes to sort of work the ground um, and cover it with um, green compost and it saves both our bucks um, and um, well it works for us but obviously if you're an energetic person you might prefer to dig it but not we we put potatoes in all of these first year beds and then a little bit more green compost each year and the weeding is reasonably okay you know you have to bear in mind that this ground have not been worked for years and years before the last sort of uh, 18 months so we still have some um, leaks although not of them are, are good but some of them we still can use there is still some baby beetroot um, to be had and some carrots in this bed well the brassica bed is now just for little cabbages I don't know if they're gonna make it or not and then is some more broccoli and I don't think they're purple sprouting I'm not quite sure what kind because um, I am very well known in our household for losing labels these are the perpetual cabbages and I think they've been obliterated by the pigeons as anything else that has not been covered and I've decided that some of these things like um, nine star broccoli or uh, perpetual cabbage I will start again well this is the other asparagus bed well prepared the flower beds are fine uh, I'm waiting for the strawberries to show themselves better so we can tidy up this bed um, the the um, that's the area of composting, it needs a bit of tidy up. And these are the water tanks which Nigel now put on the, um, some sort of, they are not bricks, they are, um, I can't remember what, the breeze blocks I think. And I just wanted to obscure the view of those breeze blocks and I have to think how, how we're gonna do this. Um, rhubarb, we didn't have very much rhubarb this year. And these obviously suffered again with, I would say, um, frost. I can't even see the other one. Let's hope it sprouts in spring. Um, so this is the other, the brassica bed we had this year. Well, you can see that everything's been basically stripped down. Everything, nothing's left. I will be pulling all of it out very soon and start all over again and we will move brassica beds and have a permanent cage for it so that's the view from this side well the greenhouse is full of things not as full as it could be but is there is there are things in it and we have a couple of little heaters which we put on and experimenting with overwintering chilies and peppers the bees are very nicely tucked in they seem to be fine when it's a nice sunny day occasionally some of them come out for a, I think clearing sort of cleansing flights and in here um, where it's gonna be when we're gonna plant the um, the raspberries and I'm just looking for the space for them because I think um, as I'm looking walking through this forest of things um, I think we will clear up some of that cut the branches out and that could be beginning of the of the raspberries here and uh, currants and so on um, just just here just here 
At this pond behind us we're going to enlarge this year slightly and a reline because it's leaking and there should be a this is the area where the, the hopefully the cage will go for for the like um, um, squashes and other things. Nigel had a good look around the future extension to the allotment to plan uh, how we're going to approach this because it's something to think about. It's not something we're going to take lightly and um, I harvested some leeks and some carrots again and uh, oh the water is boiling over and we also uh, fed those raspberries with manure and we um, uh, I've, I've, I've weeded some some things especially weeded the cabbage bed and put some um, wool pellets all around it and um, well, that's it from us for this week and hopefully be back next week with some more news from the allotment in the field. And it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. <laughs> I've just made the tea.